Who is Rafael Nadal? Are you a fan of his? Do you know this incredible player also has a nightmare? Do you want to know what it is? Well, for more information about it, stay tuned until the very end. Welcome back to Tennis Experts. Before moving on, we all know that Rafael Nadal is a Spanish tennis player. He has held the top spot in the world rankings for 209 weeks and five times at the end of the year. 22 Grand Slam men's singles trophies, including a record 14 French Open crowns. In addition to being a promising tennis player, Nadal won the regional under-12 tennis championship when he was only 8 years old. Rafael Nadal has been a nightmare opponent for many opponents on the tour, especially with those one-handed backhands of his. In addition to being a superb player, Guizhou Dimitrov and Richard Gask are two examples of this. Rafa doesn't face many opponents who would be a nightmare to play against, since he has developed into such a complete player that is very difficult to pinpoint in areas in which he can improve. Yet earlier in his career, he did come up against a guy who was a nightmare to play against. A player with an outstanding backhand, which is very important when playing against Nadal, and a player who took the ball very early, which was very difficult for Nadal, especially on hardcore. Nikolai Davidenko is the player to whom I'm referring. So, who is Nikolai Davidenko? He was a former professional tennis player from Russia. In November of 2006, he reached a singles career high rating of number 3 in the world. Reaching the semi-finals of a Grand Slam tournament was Davidenko's best performance. He did so four times, twice at each of the French Open and the US Open, losing to Roger Federer in all but one of those matches. The 2009 ATP World Tour Finals victory was his greatest accomplishment. He has also won three ATP Master Series tournaments. Midway through the month of October 2014, Davidenko announced his retirement. Then how did he become a nightmare for Rafael? In their first meeting at the Masters Cup in 2006, Nadal lost a more difficult set, but rallied to win the third set 6-4. The next meeting between two exceptional players took place in 2007 in Rome, when Rafael Nadal was in the midst of the historic 81-match winning streak on clay. He obviously prevailed in this match, but it wasn't simple. In one of the greatest clay court matchups of the decade, it took Nadal 3 hours and 30 minutes to defeat David Denko. And you could already tell that David Denko would be a difficult opponent for Nadal. One of the first significant events that Nadal hadn't won in his career was Miami, which is where they played their next match in 2008. Of course, Nadal lost this match. In fact, Davidenko outplayed Nadal in this final. Considering how difficult it is to defeat Nadal in the finals, very few players can make this claim. Still, Davidenko defeated Nadal with scores of 6-4 and 6-2 while appearing unstoppable in the closing moments of the contest. Even David Denko had no chance in the subsequent match, which was also played in the Monte Carlo semi-finals. In that competition, Nadal didn't lose a set. In this match, he defeated David Denko 6-3 and 6-2. They played again in the closing weeks of the same season, but Nadal withdrew due to a knee injury. They then played again on the red dirt when he was down by 6 games to 1, and the outcome was the same as it was the year before, 6-3 and 6-2 to Nadal. Later in 2009, they faced off in a Masters 1000 final in Shanghai, which Nadal won without dropping a set in, and David Denko once more showed that he was a very difficult opponent for Nadal to beat on hard courts by winning in straight sets. And the outcome remained the same when they ran into each other again at the Monsters Cup a short while later. Nadal was defeated in straight sets by David Goffin. The next season, when they faced off in another final, this time in Doha, Nadal had the chance to exact revenge and things got off to a great start for him when the girl supported the break of the love game. Yet, as was predicted, the second set, which was decided by a tie-break, was considerably closer, and that's when this occurred. If you love these tennis players as much as we do, then hit that subscribe button! Davey Denko recently made a comment on the Spaniards' ability on hard court in an interview with Clay Magazine. Quote, Playing against Nadal on clay felt like playing against just another opponent. End quote. In each of our meetings on hard court, I have triumphed. With a record of 5-6 against the Russians after 11 meetings, Nadal is in last place. 
Speaking of the tournaments on hard courts, they faced off seven times on the surface, with Nadal winning just one match. In 2006, at the Tennis Masters Cup, the former world number one defeated Davy Denko in three sets of 5-7, 6-4, 6-4. In addition, Davidenko consistently eliminated him during crucial rounds of important ATP events like the Shanghai and Madrid Masters. In fact, the Russian slipped the Miami Open Championship from his grasp in 2008. Rafael Nadal, known as the King of Clay, has a perfect record in clay courts with a win rate of 92%. From 507 matches played so far on clay, the Spaniard has won 464 of them. But still, he was not able to win against him. Only five players have won so far on several matches and have a winning head-to-head -head record against Rafael Nadal. Together with some unexpected names, the list features some of the greatest players ever. Davidenko is one of them. Even though Nikolay Davidenko was one of the finest players in the middle and the end of the 2000s, few people anticipated that he would have a 6-5 head-to-head record against Rafael Nadal. In actuality, the Russians won four straight matches against the King of Clay. How did he do that? Currently, Nikolay Davidenko is coaching children between the ages of 9 and 11, a group that also includes his daughter, Ekaterina. David Denko discussed some of the memorable matches he played against Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer in his interview with Clay. He also discussed his impressions of Novak Djokovic when he first encountered the Serbian as a young player. David Denko also discussed his difficulties in locating sponsors, a match that he would like to replay, and why it was simpler for him to defeat Nadal on hard courts, yet so challenging to defeat Federer. Let's rewind a bit and see how he came into the field of tennis. At the age of seven, he began playing tennis alongside his brother, Edward, who is nine years older than him. He left his hometown at the age of 11 and moved to Volgograd in Russia. His brother, Edward, who was then a children's tennis coach in Volgograd, was the one who started the departure. He used Nikolay's inability to advance professionally at home as motivation for his brother's transfer. The brothers made the same decision to relocate to Salmtal, Rhineland Palatinate, in Germany four years later, in 1996. The brothers had lived in Germany for three years and then filed for German citizenship, but the German Tennis Federation would not support the application, and as a result, they returned to Russia. At the age of 18, Nikolay converted his Ukrainian citizenship, which had been automatically awarded at 14, to a Russian citizenship. He unsuccessfully petitioned for Austrian citizenship in 2007 in order to get dual citizenship. He was inspired by his struggles getting a visa when he had a Russian passport. Yet despite the fact that other local officials appeared to be in favor of it, the Austrian sports minister opposed giving him one. Davidenko quotes the Austrian minister by saying, It's too soon. He now has three children with his wife, Irina, a former model who married him in 2006. Now that we know, he is also disciplining his daughter. Will she raise to fame as the best player? Only time will tell. In 1999, Davidenko became a professional. He primarily competed on the Futures Tour in 2000, where he won one championship and advanced to three finals. He reached the semi-finals in Amsterdam, where he made his ATP debut. He won his Maiden Challenger Championship in München Gladbach later in August. Davidenko did not have a winning streak in the 2014 season. Daniel Brands defeated him in the opening round of the Qatar Open. Richard Gasquet defeated him in the second round of the Australian Open. Davidenko beat world number 39 Julian Bonato in Montpellier, but he was upset by world number 248 Albano Olivetti. At a press conference in Moscow on October 16th, Davidenko declared his retirement, confirming these speculations. Davidenko played an offensive baseline style, hitting both wings with deep, penetrating ground strokes. His backhand and forehand ground strokes were technically proficient. He was able to hit the ball early thanks to the incredible foot speed and anticipation, which put opponents out of position and let him control the play in a manner reminiscent of the world former number one, Andre Agassi. So what do you think? Who would win if they played a match together now? Do share your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, never forget to like, share, and hit the subscribe button for more interesting tennis-related videos. Refer to other videos on our channel too, and we'll see you in the next video.